I'll make this easy for you. I read up on a guy, and he put this scribble on a piece of paper. I, I went out there, I was invited to talk with him, so I did. Uh, one Donald Trump. I said, I said, yeah, I'm gonna make a movie on him. <laughs> <laughs> when he ran and won that year, and he invited me to come and talk to us, so I said, yeah. So I, I put this on a little piece of paper. Not like that. A piece of paper. I want to have it on pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I hope you win. I hope for you. I said, I'm just going to give this. So I gave him a little small card to this on. You know, he just got that and looked at it. So Trump looks at it. He says, What is that? I said, I tracked him. I said, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> that way we got to have to discuss it. He didn't know. So he looked at this and he said, what, what does all that mean? I said, well, there's an arrow coming out of heaven. <laughs> we count time by it. But that's from Jesus. He was like, oh. I said, he died on the cross for the sins of the world. I said, including yours, John. I said, you have sinned. That he said, oh, you bet I have a lot. I said, me too. He said, he died on the cross to remove our sin. They buried him like they would bury somebody when they killed him. They buried him. So they buried him. The first problem is solved here. Cleanse you of all, every sin you left from you. Every bad mood taken care of. And on top of that, three days after they buried him, couldn't kill it. Came back from the dead. The resurrection. I said, there's no other way I've ever run up on where I would be raised from the dead. And y'all, this is it. And if this is not it, you remove all your sin. You resurrect it from the grave. I'll resurrect you. Just believe it. Free of charge. And that air is going, he went back into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the Father. There's only one thing now we're waiting on. The return. And you got a better story. I'm listening. C. C plus. Say C plus. That's all you could get. C plus. So I, I'm college educated. I knew y'all could tell I, I walked in the door. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm starting with this text today. You can start anywhere. But I'll start with this text. In lieu of that, what are the odds? Just, uh, just, a thought. What are the odds? That it happens to be 2,024 years based on who? What's, what's this for? That's when Jesus showed us. <laughs> we all count time back. Every one of us. What year is it in China out there? Years. Well, if you count time, somebody, because of him, he established timekeeping. I would think you'd look into that. 
just off the top of your head, you're like, why do we count time by Jesus? Because he removed all your sin and he'll raise you from the dead. <laughs> I'm like, now I heard that when I was about 28. So from huh, about 15, 18 years old from there for the rest of that tenure, 28 years of sinful conduct, I run up on him, my little sister. She's passed on, she's with the Lord now. But when she was there, she said, if we could convert him, he'll convert others. So she got a preacher and they showed up and I listened for the first time. And I came to Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. These are the brothers, the sons and daughters of God. There is one body, the Jesus crowd. One spirit, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, so that your sins will be forgiven, and God will give you His Spirit, His Holy Spirit. There's one body, you're meeting with it today, you say, so y'all are, you can just say, that we're members of the kingdom of God and Jesus is the king. Duh. Right. There's 25 different, 25,000 roughly, different groups. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Now that guy back there with them whiskers, he's fit to join that. Y'all are with the kingdom of God and Jesus is the king. You're like, huh? One Lord, that's Him. One faith, that's Him. One baptism. I'm reading from Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> the word says what I'm reading. One Lord, Jesus. You know who He is already. You can't miss Him. <clears throat> One faith. All this other crap you see here and there. And there uh, no, no Jesus in the schools. One baptism. <clears throat> You die to sin. You're buried. <coughs> and you're born again. God give repent and be baptized. You receive the Spirit of God. So we got it figured out. Say, what happened to America? They forgot that. They went down the wrong trail, too many of them. We got armed men. How many churches are they going to shoot up before you? somebody says, we better get some law enforcement? And some guns in there. Dangerous. They just bust through the door and start shooting. And how many times will it take for you to say, this is a mean bunch. Love God and love your neighbor. That's us. There's one body, one spirit, one hope when you were called. I'm reading the Bible here. 
One Lord. We've covered Him, Jesus. One faith. You better believe in Him. If you want to get out of here alive, have you ever found something that will get you out of here alive? Yes, sir. I mean, we've all sinned like... Am I the only one who has been commode, hug, and drunk? <coughs> How many of y'all have been commode, hug, and drunk? Look around. Look around. You're like, whew! Jesus covered that one, took it away. Not counted against you. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. You read that, you say, man, a lot. So, when Jesus got there, there's another dude that showed up. And somebody said, who in the world is that? John the Baptist. Whoever believes in me, Jesus said, as the Scripture has said, we got John the Baptist. They called him the Baptist. You know why? He was sent to do one thing. Baptize, Baptize people. This is before Jesus died, was buried, and raised from the dead. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, Jesus talking, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit. God's Spirit. There's one of them. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's one. By this he meant the Spirit, Jesus, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. The Spirit hadn't been given yet. But John the Baptist is running around and all he does is baptize people, getting them ready to receive the Spirit. But the Spirit wasn't given then. That's why I'm reading uh, the book of John, verse 39. 739. By this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive and they were. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus has not yet been glorified. <laughs> but when Jesus died, was buried and raised from the dead. Then you get to the book of Acts. In the podcast we get that we're running for y'all, you're seeing just after Jesus died, was buried, was raised, spent 40 days. Let's see. Then the book of Acts shows up. Let's see right here. Jesus is talking. It's not for you to know the times and dates the Father sent by His own authority, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and the cloud hid him from their sight. Adios. I'm going back to my father now. And you say, how did he, he leave? He flew away. <laughs> and they would do. What in the world? They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Jesus is leaving now. That final hair, see that hair coming up there? You say, well, what's the next thing? He went back into heaven. I'm reading it to you right now. Up in heaven, that's where he's now. He's coming back. All I can tell y'all is, you better be ready. Amen. I mean, you better sure enough get ready because there's going to be screaming and hollering. 
They say we're nuts. Men of Galilee, why do you stand there and look up to the sky? The same Jesus who's been taken to you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. He'll fly in. You say, that's a wild story. You got a better one? No. Have you ever seen? No. Are you going to die? Yes. In this case, in the hospital now, would you like to die? No. My sister, my mom, my dad, my woman. Miss K came close on this round. I'm 78 next month. That puts me two years shy of 80. That resurrection is looming larger all the time. Because it, it is the only shot I've got, and it's the only shot you've got. If there's no God and no Jesus, nobody's going to make it. Amen. It's just piles of mud. They simply just come out of mud. I turn one page. Therefore, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard it, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, old Peter, commercial fisherman like me, I've been commercial fisherman about 10 years. You want a job, take that one. <laughs> Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized. Good call, man. <laughs> Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven. We all got them. He's taking them all away. Not counting them and count them. The sins against you. You're like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Man, he did that. When you go down and you come up today, they go out with the one. Usually, you know what happens? When one raises their hand, for some reason, I don't think I think I know what it is, and you do too. Some more are baptized. <laughs> they see one, they're like, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the marker for you. You're coming out alive. The ones of you who've done that. Look, if you were two months old, a little baby, and some of these people are back and say, we need to baptize that one. I'm like, do what? Baptize that baby? Are you nuts? They don't know what sin is. They're two months old. That's those sins that really piled up on that little booger. <laughs> we better baptize. We better baptize her. I'm like, you know good and well that little child doesn't have sins. Something happened with those little children. They're going to heaven. Yeah. You got them dead. They had that too much. Oh, little baby, I know the sins have piled up on you. <laughs> but once they get to about 10 or 12, 15, and they're about 15, junior high, you remember. That's when the trouble started. Immorality, drunkenness, getting high, getting drunk, getting laid. <laughs> so, watch. Ten, I just read one. 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's one. You say, what book are you in? I'm in the book of Acts. Jesus has gone into heaven. Why are you standing there looking up the sky? He's coming back the same way he went. Peter, the one that said, get me out of here. All of the disciples deserted. He had to call them all back in. They, they couldn't believe it either. So, Acts chapter 2, I read, verse 37 and 38, repent and be baptized. So I'm going to turn to a page like this. There are my notes. Neat. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 38. I'd write that one down if it's me. Just write it down. That way you can look at it. Because you're going to learn some people say you need. Do you believe in Jesus? First, faith in God. Faith in Jesus Christ. Belief. I believe. Repentance. I'm sitting here before y'all. I used to get drunk at school, brown, smoking dope, you know, running around cursing and carrying on. Yes, it was pitiful. But y'all been down the same road. We've all sinned. Right? right. So I read you one. Do this. Second time, you turn about three or four pages. There's Acts 7. Acts, Acts 5, uh, 42, day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house. They never stopped teaching and proclaiming the gospel that Jesus is, Jesus is the Christ. Now, I'm turning the page. I hit Acts chapter 8, about verse 12. Let's see. 8, 12. Now, for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city of sorcery. You've heard about it. Amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed, This man is the divine power known as the great power. Well, we got a, we got a big dog here. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. And this dude is up, up to no good. And he's running around hot. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom, I told y'all, when you obey the gospel, you're members of the kingdom. Amen. The king is Jesus. We're with him. He is our king. We bow down to him. When they believed Philip, that's my name, I'm the same Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, well, what do you know? They were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself, that sorcerer, and doing all that cutting up with all that crap he's throwing out. Simon himself believed and was baptized. And he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. So that's twice. Next, we get to Acts 36. Acts 36. This is a pretty good story. Uh, I'll start. Go south on the road. Got marching orders to Philip. Uh, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, watch, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an official. I got a eunuch that works for me, old Dan the eunuch. I said, Dan. Yeah, you get married? He said, I don't think so. I said, I said, what did your daddy say when you when you said you're about 40 years old, no dating, no women, none? Somebody said, well, he's squirty. No, he ain't squirty. He just, he, he just said, I don't want to be married. Uh, you know, and all this goes with it. 
He said, I'm just going to stay single. So a lot of people think he's up to no good, but he ain't. Here's one right here. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, I got a Louisiana unit that works for me. I paid his bill. Gave him a house. Miss K sent him to town. Okay, here's what I want you to get, you know. The unit takes off. He met an Ethiopian unit and an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace. This was a big dude. Then, you know, uh, he's, he's got a ticket to my bank account. Queen of Ethiopia, the man had come to Jerusalem to worship the eunuch, and on his way home was sitting in the chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. He's reading the Old Testament because he didn't have the New Testament. But Jesus has come, died, been gone. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chair. He's on foot. <laughs> and he heard the man, the, the eunuch, reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Here comes Philip, hopping along. He does what I do, preach the gospel. Wherever I'm, wherever I am, what I'm doing, blowing duck off, I get Jesus out there. I get Jesus out preach the gospel. I can't help myself. I have to. Well, Philip... That's my name, Philip. Philip asks, how can I? You know, I mean, you know, how can I uh, know this? How can I? Uh, he said, unless someone explains it to me, this Bible verse. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. He said, get on up here next to these donkeys, uh, probably camels, whatever. The eunuch was reading this passage of the scripture. Uh, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. Speaking to Jesus, led like a sheep to the slaughter. That's the text he's reading from. Where is that text? Isaiah 53. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. <coughs> and as a lamb before the shear is silent. This is Acts chapter 8, about verse 32. So he did not open his mouth. The, the prophet's talking about Jesus. Just let him do it all to him. They beat him. Can you imagine being crucified like that? Mm -hmm. He didn't open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. I mean, he never made a mistake. Look what they did to him. They just slaughtered him. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. That's Jesus dying. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who's the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? So Philip began with that very passage. He said, that's, that's Jesus, man. That very passage of Scripture and told him the good news, the gospel, about Jesus. Watch. As they travel along the road, the unit's riding along there thinking, good. As they travel along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, he's the one that Philip is talking to. Look, here's water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? How would he have known if he never heard of Jesus? And after Philip told him who Jesus was in his death on the cross and his resurrection, how would he have known anything about being baptized? Philip told him. Like I'm telling y'all. That way, when you say, did I get all this right? was I baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I received God's Spirit. Why shouldn't I be baptized, the eunuch said. He ordered the chariot to stop. Ooh. Then both Philip 
and the eunuch went down into the water. When it knocks out, sprinkle a little water on somebody. That's out. A lot of them do that. You say, Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he ordered the chariot to stop. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized. When they came up out of the water, and I've seen this a lot, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, went on to Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in the towns until he reached Caesarea. Fast forward 2,000 years. I have I have the oldest one. All he does is preach the gospel nationwide, worldwide. Jace, sitting next to him, another brother, one of my sons. That dude well, lady, he is preaching the gospel all over these United States. Willie, the third one, he's somewhere in there right now, today, preaching the gospel somewhere. My son, Al, the oldest one, is going to be to do the lesson and preach the sermon out here in about 20 minutes. You say, ah, where did you get all your boys to be? Jacked up. He, all of them been on TV, you know, and, 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 most of them, you know, pretty, they're doing pretty good. But you say, but they're all preaching the gospel, the whole bunch. We're just doing the same thing I'm reading about in the book of Acts 2,000 years ago. Some guy named Philip comes along here, and it, and it mentions other ones and their sons. Let's see. That was Acts 8.36, Acts 8, yeah. 8.36. Now, let's see. Acts 9.18. I turned one page. Acts 1.19. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. The Apostle Paul is given his rendition of what turned him, <laughs> turned him around. I mean, he's going along there, you know, and, you know, a big dog, you know, he's going around and killing Christians. That's what he was doing. Killing them. All of a sudden, he said, what? what? Whoa, whoa, I lost my sight. My sight got something in my eyes. I can't. I'm blind. Ananias went. This is chapter 9 of the book of Acts. Verse, uh, where are my glasses? Where the... Uh, Verse 17, Ananias went to the house and entered it. He placed his hands on Saul. He's blind. Saul, he goes down there, you know, and stayed with this guy. And, and this guy, watch, placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you were coming up here, he could see, he could see then. But when he got up in right here, he said, you know, you, you're going down the road. Next thing you know, you're blind as a bat, right? Yeah. Uh, he appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He sent me that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Good night. He was a killer of Christians. And Jesus, the Son of God, cut him some slack. He blinded him first. He said, you're going to keep going to kill my people? Dude, sit down and shut up and let me talk to you about this. He, filled, he was filled with the Holy Spirit immediately. Something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. Good grief. And he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he ain't eaten three days, he regained his strength. He wrote most of the New Testament. The guy that we, the, Jesus blinded, struck down, got him back up, 
He said, I got a job for you. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Name it and I'll do it. Boy, has he changed. <laughs> you say, God is a very forgiving God. He let that dude go. That's a lesson for all of us. Don't be mean to each other. I'm telling you, I'm on the fourth baptism. Acts 8, 38 on that one. 36, let's see. Chapter there, there's Philip. There's Andrew, there's a, there's a, that one. That's chapter 9. Let me see. 9, 18. I turn one page. Chapter 10 in the book of Acts. Let's see. Yeah. Chapter 10, about verse... Uh, listen to this one. Verse 47. Peter said... Now I could give you a little story about it. But he, well, here's his story. Uh, you know what's happened throughout Judea? Peter's talking. Beginning in Galilee and the baptism of John, he, what he preached... That's a baptism without the Spirit being given. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how He went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with Him. We're all witnesses of everything He did in the country of the Jews in Jerusalem. They killed Him by hanging Him on a tree. The Gospel is first seed. That's right there. They killed Him by hanging I got it right on the left. But God raised Him from the dead. I've got it on your left hand and cause him to be seen. Make sure you write that down. God became flesh, one hour coming out of heaven. There's only died on the cross. That's right there. He put him in a tomb like they're going to do you. He was resurrected from the tomb. He went back into heaven. That's that believing there. There's one coming back in the return. You better be ready when he gets here is all I'm telling you. By the way, I used to get drunk high and in my world. I can't even remember the last time I cussed. I quit cussing. I'm just saying little things. When's the last time you shouted out cursing somebody. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop that. That's, that's, that's youth stuff. Am I out of time? Yes, sir. Uh, I've got five minutes. <laughs> Peter said, can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? That's down there in verse 46. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have, so he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then they asked Philip to stay with them. I, I never left the book of Acts. Ten times. Ten stories about people being baptized. <coughs> now, we got one. Anybody else? We got two of you. Amen. Huh? Two? We got two. All right. We'll see you, man.